Hello everyone, I welcome you on behalf of the NUC Strategy Advisory Committee to the Virtual Institute for Capacity Building in Higher Education, VICBE. I like to put God first in all that I do. So I like to pray that God will be with us throughout this course. I'd like to thank God for keeping us since January to today. Today actually is August the 29th. That's when I'm doing this, uh, presenting this lesson. In a few days, we're going to get into September, October, November, December. Well, God that has kept us throughout from the beginning will not leave us, will keep us decades beyond. I welcome you to Module 2. Module 1, we did Fundamentals of Quality Assurance, a big, like, umbrella concept. This Module 2 now narrows to accreditation within quality assurance. I'll be looking at the fundamentals, the current practices, and the future of accreditation. Tomorrow, that's August the 30th, is the grand opening ceremony of the six-week training. It's going to be exciting all the way, I assure you of that. And the keynote address speaker for tomorrow, the opening ceremony, is no other than the former head of tertiary education of the whole of the world back, Professor Jamil Samuel. We have asked Jamil to focus more on the future, the future of accreditation, because here we have the participants are vice chancellors, directors of quality assurance, NGC staff, staff of national quality assurance agencies from all over Africa and other stakeholders. So we are, we are familiar, we're on familiar terrain with accreditation. So we want him to look at the future. This lesson, number one, is on fundamentals of accreditation. So what's next? Uh, what's next, of course, is for us to get into class. So let's get into class. Oh, yeah. Welcome back uh, to class, fundamentals of accreditation in higher education. Um, Peter Okebukola and August 29th is today, 2021, and this is part of my quality assurance made easy series. Now, let's clear some misunderstanding. Some people will want to equate accreditation to quality assurance. Of course, they are not equal. The quality assurance concept is broader. It encapsulates accreditation and the others that I've listed here are much more, meaning that accreditation is a subset of quality assurance. Quality assurance is the umbrella concept. Uh, for instance, take the others. External examiner system. Now you invite a professor from uh, a, a, a university to come check out the question papers or how you've marked your scripts. That is not accreditation. That's just external examination to, to for external examination for a PhD thesis. When the students are assessing the lecturers, it's all part of the quality assurance. That's not accreditation. When you're conducting exams for your students, like uh, Nigeria, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, conducting the UTME for our students, that's all part of quality assurance. That's not accreditation. When somebody is being, uh, publications are being uh, assessed by as part, that's part of quality assurance. That's not accreditation. So let's get this uh, misunderstanding cleared as we begin. Now, let's imagine a world of a university or any higher education institution for that matter without accreditation mediocrity will just take full swing there'll be poorer quality graduates the level of funding will depress and of course public trust will diminish so it will be a world of uh, free for all every man for himself god for us all it is such a world that you have this kind of uh, teacher or lecturer or professor, uh, such a world of lawlessness. In this course, nobody will get an A. A is for God, B is for me, C is for the serious students, and you can share the D's and the E's among yourselves. But if you go to serious universities like Harvard, now how do you tell whether someone went to Harvard? Uh, you don't. They will tell they will definitely tell you <laughs> they will definitely tell you so here is a lady who went for an interview an interviewer said it says here in your cv you went to harvard university oh me oh yeah i was <laughs> visiting my sister of course i was not visiting my sister i don't have any sister in harvard but i attended harvard uh, this is uh, my class in harvard 
Now, what are the fundamentals that we'll be looking at in this lesson one? Now, these are the etymology and definition, purpose, and all these things that we can see on the screen. Now, let's begin. What are the fundamentals? So, let's take etymology. That's the origin of the word. Now, uh, a credit coming from accreditation, uh, falsely Latinized in French, you know, French accreditor. The word was written in English in the original sense, but became common in the meaning, confer credit or authority on. Well, let's get on to the next one. That's definition. Now, I am not going to uh, spend these lessons, this series of lessons, uh, give you definitions of uh, others from outside Africa. Uh, this is because Africans are brilliant enough to also offer their definitions. Because what you, what you find is this inferiority complex that if is if a definition is not by someone from the West, then it's inferior. I mean, is if it's not for then it's inferior, and not acceptable. So my position is clear. That we must shake off this inferiority complex. That's only the definition by someone from the West that is superior and acceptable. So what I'm going to do here is uh, populate the definition component with experts from voices from experts from africa and so what did i do i surveyed you the participants you know participants are vice chancellors what uh, uh, what more expert do you need vice chancellors directors of quality assurance heads of national quality assurance agencies and uh, members of nuc staff of nuc national quality assurance and all of that so i surveyed and within a few minutes what did i get two five eight of you responded to the survey and the first question is uh, I said three quick questions demanding answers straight from the heart. No consultations from other sources. And the question is, number one, how will you define accreditation to a person on the street in very simple language? Oh, my goodness, I got harvest, as I said, 258 African experts. And I have 27 pages of those definitions. So why should I go and quote somebody? Uh, you know, uh, you, you find a situation where uh, scholars in Africa will say, according to Benjamin Franklin, according to Delano Roosevelt, according to Barack Obama, ah, what is happening? We have uh, wise people also in Africa. We have scholars also in Africa. So I have 27 pages of definitions of accreditation here. And uh, I'll just show you what I have. As you can see from this screen, I have 27 pages. Uh, see, I've arranged in alphabetical order. Uh, scholars one and all professors vice chancellors you can see what they are and every definition that you see here is valid and it's straight from the heart so it's not copy work that according to so so and so no 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 i'm going to quote according to body uh this is what i have so let me just give you a few highlights well i like to uh, caution that the ones i have highlighted in yellow do not necessarily mean that they are the best, but they, ref they, re they reflect the common themes that are we're seeing in here. But look at Abdul, ha uh, Abdul Hamid, uh, wow. uh, the, the names are arranged in alphabetical order. So uh, Abiy Abbasi, Lydia, professor, University of Calabar, it's a process of evaluating higher institutions to make sure they keep to and maintain required standards for conducive learning. Uh, all of these ones that I'm galloping through, they are all very correct. Akito Yerufo Zishola, Professor Babcock University, an independent check on what you are doing and how you are doing it to ensure that you are doing it correctly, help you where you are weak, protect the interests of your consumers to customers, increase your confidence in what you're doing and sell, your pro and sell you properly to the world. Akukuma Veronica from University of Benin Accredi Accreditation is an exercise or activity whereby the programs, the facilities, and the resources of institutions of higher learning are evaluated against quality standards set by the evaluating body. National Investment Commission is the evaluating body for Nigeria. You can see Alwede, uh, Amanam, Ruth, and De, Anyawu, Hyoma, Arigbabu. Oh, yeah. Let's talk, take a, a person, Abayama Arigbabu. He was vice chancellor of uh, maybe on leave uh, of uh, Taishura University of Education. He is currently the Honorable Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology of Ogun State University. You can see this man coming from co being commissioner to come and learn here, to come and enroll for the course. What is uh, Professor Arikba saying? He said it's a process or act 
of assessing the extent or level of compliance or adherence to established acceptable standards. I tell you, this Sunday, uh, Professor Samsi Anyolaja is based in Botswana, ABM University, Gaborom, and he's saying the process of evaluating and assessing institutions against known standards of quality and quantity of infrastructure, facilities, and human resources, so as to ascertain whether or not the institution, institution has capacity to produce skillful graduates. But Balolachi, the vice chancellor, this vice chancellor of uh, Krishna University, accreditation means it recognizes, and so on. You can see that. Badijo Aidiji, uh, former dean of education, accreditation is the process of Lagos State University of ascertaining that minimum standards are maintained in the teaching learning process in our university and other higher institutions and, and the rest of them. So all the ones that I have not highlighted, the, what you've said they are correct. Chukuma Grace National Universities Commission, uh, let's keep going, Fato Kun Samson, uh, that's the Chairman Board of Trustees of Samuel Adegwega University, Fato Kun Johnson, that's Deputy Vice Chancellor of University uh, Lagos, you can see we have big, big people here. Uh, they're going this train. Vice Chancellor's Chairman of uh, in Kutaria, Dorothy, Professor Ignatius Ajuru University of Education, Port You know, you can see. So time does not permit that I will read through all of this, but you see, I'm going to give you this file containing this. So be quoting them. Quote yourselves. Daishime Richard from Burundi. Accreditation is the way people or institutions are recognized. They fulfill the missions they have set up. Obadiah oh, Joshua, oh, good uh, chemist from uh, Ilorin. The same thing, all of you. So, keep going for the show. Oh, 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 that, that's it. That's uh, <laughs> who that will be. Accreditation, that's my, my madam. Accreditation is the process of evaluating the programs or activities of accreditation towards the achievement of said goals. Okude, my dean, so you can see what, what, what uh, we have there. Olari Day, Elizabeth, and that's Vice Chancellor of Abuad University. Where this place is populated by Vice Chancellors. So why should I be quoting outside Africa, outside, uh, you know, this Piri, there's the, 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 the Piri, uh, Dr. Piri, Ambu Mulire Piri, is the uh, head of the National Council for Higher Education of Malawi. Look at what she said. It's a process of validating that the quality of education offered by higher institution can be trusted. So we're talking about trust here. Because it compares to other specific respected programs locally and internationally. Ramadan is uh, in Burundi. And so you have uh, all of these people here. Uh, so time does not permit that I look at Uzabadi, it's the finals, Bingham University. So you can see we have a rich harvest of definitions of accreditation from experts from across Africa. I'm sure somebody is asking me, what about my own? Yes, I'll share my definition with you. I, I've defined accreditation as a process. As you can see, you all said process, process. Yes, there's actually also a product part of it. Whereby an institution or a program is subject to review by competent body or organization. The competent body can be National Quality Assurance Agency. It can be a professional body that's empowered by law so to do. You know how to establish whether or not the given institution or program meets a particular set of standards. I provided this definition 10 years ago. That's the reference. Okay, so let's go on to the next fundamentals. Purpose of accreditation. I've identified uh, three. I've called them three fundamental purposes. There are several other purposes. One is to assure the quality of the institution or the program and after doing that is that all no to assure to assist the improvement of the institution or program and third to protect the interest to, of the students their parents against bogus <laughs> and employers of those that uh, to assuring that the educational programs offered have attained a level that meets or exceeds i like this meets or exceeds standards that were developed by experts in the field we we'll go on to the third one, drivers of accreditation. What do I mean by drivers? I mean the forces that shape accreditation, that force you to do accreditation. So one is public pressure. I have six of them, six drivers. So one is public, there could be more. Public pressure. So you need to separate bogus institutions. Like in my region, sub-region, if you like, West Africa, there are some countries with very bogus institutions. So when you do accreditation, you're able to separate it. Pressure from the public to say, no, 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 you don't go there. 
So the accreditation now kicks in. For those that are in good standing, separating is like separating the wheat from the chaff. There's, there's a concern. You see, there's increased enrollment when you have large quantity, quality may suffer. But when you do accreditation, you're likely to uh, gain some mileage on uh, quality. So there's massification all over. There's concern about the decline of academic standards in the face of increasing enrollment. So that's a driver for accreditation. The other is that uh, they believe that, okay, uh, Ivory Tower, you, uh, you are still autonomy. You can self-regulate, but you can do its own. Not like, because stakeholders are saying, especially the businesses, professional bodies, but they are losing confidence in the ability of the universities to self-regulate under the guise of student autonomy. So that's a driver for accreditation by a competent body. And then money is reducing the budget for education or education reduces so it's pressure to, put, to to be more efficient in producing quality quality graduates five of six is accountability so that is the accountability and value for money you are putting all this money into universities to our education so let's have the money value for money uh from the against the universities the last one is increasing competitiveness as you will notice from 2003 you have global ranking of universities and everybody's scrambling you want to be able to do better than you did the last time the, the league table was published so accreditation will be a stimulant a driver to say okay let, let's do better so that we'll improve our ranking let's go on to next one for the fundamentals Accreditation versus certification. What is the difference? Now, both terms overlap somehow, but differences exist. Let's take certification. Certification is a written assurance by a third party of the conformity of a product or process to specify requirements. So you get a certification for a product. You get you you uh, maybe for yeah a product in the in the university or in uh, in an in, a, in an industry. So certification for a product. But accreditation, on the other hand, is a form of recognition by an authorized authoritative body of the competence of the entire organization to attain specified standards. In effect, certification is a third party endorsement of an organization's systems or products. While accreditation is an independent third party, also a third party endorsement of the certification. So you get certification. Ah, so let us. Let, 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 let us accredit you as an organization that has certification. So certification you is commonly associated with ISO, ISO 9001. It's an internationally recognized standard for quality management systems. So last line here is that accreditation is generally considered to be a higher level of recognition than certification. In other words, you find certification bodies to hold some kind of accreditation that we are a certification body but you're also going to be uh, to be <laughs> accredited so people we are moving 10 items under fundamentals we are number five that's brief history hey let's take a rest people let's take a rest let's go on a short break and when we come back we'll go on that history So welcome back uh, from the break. I, I think we need to move a little bit faster, and uh, that means we've got to take a bike rather than a motorcycle, rather than uh, uh, walk. Uh, in Nigeria, we call those motorcycles, <coughs> excuse me, Okada. So there's this uh, man carrying rice. Say, oh, hey, Okada man, take it easy. You are splashing mud all over my rice. Uh -oh -oh. The Okada man said, it's not my fault. Okay, the man who gave you the rice is the one who gave us the road. Uh, but don't worry, our road will be very smooth as we go along the history. We're going to walk along the history of accreditation. The road will be smooth. Now, the story of accreditation dates back over 130 years. And it's a story that originated from the U.S. Because the U.S. had the oldest tradition dating back as you can see 1800s and early 1900s now when the university of state university of the state of new york that's board of regents <clears throat> was established it became 
what is known as the first accrediting agency, 1787. And through that period, we had, no, by 1847, this 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 instructed, the American Medical Association, you know, started accrediting medical programs. But they found that there were proliferation of medical programs and quackery was reigning. So this organization is reputed as one of the early, early accreditors. Uh, on January 14, the Association of American Universities formally listed recognized colleges. And then you have this uh, road that uh, part of the history. Uh, the listing for accreditation, accreditation was terminated uh, by 1948. And the 20th century was there's a series of developments, evolution from control by professional and subject associations and state involvement including the recognition of universities in the list of accredited universities. Let's move on to Europe. Europe is more recent. The, that of the, the, the US one, you can see how far back it is. Europe is uh, much later, in about 1980s. And then in Africa, Great Africa. Now, the emergence of national quality assurance agencies, you see from 1960s, 1960s, saw the emergence of the quality national quality assurance agencies. You know, as we said, you cannot accredit yourself. You have to give somebody accredits you. So when the National Quality Assurance Agencies were established, it now began the process of accreditation. And we have Nigeria, Kames, Kenya, South Africa that made the early start. Now, this is from Salu, well, Building Salu, 2021. Uh, you can see Nigeria is uh, the oldest here in terms of establishment of the National Universities Commission. After we, 1962, as far back as that, but accreditation really did start on the early 1990s. So you had Kames with 16 Francophone African countries. You're going to get many of these people come to speak with us, come to make presentations on how they have progressed along the road. Council for Education in Kenya and all of that. Ghana uh, National Accreditation Board has now evolved to uh, GTEC, Ghana uh, Tertiary Education. Uh, commission and so you have all the way Egypt well doing quite well Naka uh, went there two years ago uh, to interact with the organizers, the organizers there. so we don't pass that road that rough road we are now in the advantages and benefits section of the fundamentals oh my goodness I had 250 responses of African experts and the question was what will you tell the person are the benefits of accreditation? Somebody you, you, you meet on the street. So you have, I have, uh, I'm going to check in a minute and you see so many pages of our experts telling us what the benefits are when they want to tell somebody on the street. As you can see, I have 21 pages, 21 pages. Look, alphabetically listed so you can see of the advantages or benefits of accreditation this is very very impressive i, I didn't make a mark of some of them though but that's not to say that they are the best or the worst i mean uh, but let's see them some of those that are highlighted not necessarily that they are but they they, they represent a group of others abdullah rabi mrs uh, national universities commission accreditation assists uh, institutions in knowing their weaknesses and in correcting them. Abdurrahman, a professor from ABU, the benefits are many. High quality graduates, confident of themselves and their institutions can work anywhere in the world. Uh, Lydia Abia Basi Calabar, ensure standards and quality are maintained, ensure students have a conducive learning environment, ensures adequate provision of equipment and materials for learning. Abaka Musa of BUK is a majority it is majorly to ensure quality control in terms of the personnel on the one hand and the working tools on the other. So overall, the society, individual students, a place of labor are protected against loss of their resources. <laughs> in a worthless venture, Professor Moza Abubakar, I agree, agree with you. Accreditation is thus a veritable tool that guides all the stakeholders in deciding whether to enroll in the institution or engage the product of those institutions. Achimugu, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ramatu, so that's what she said. Professor Investor Benin, uh, Adaiko Martina, the benefits include making sure that investors in Nigeria com 
uh, compare favorably with other universities over the world in terms of quality of staff, curriculum, equipment, library, and all of that. So the ones that I've not marked are equally good, if not better. But what I've just done is to identify uh, those that will be like rallying point for the others. Uh, Professor Gombe State University, I think what you saw, no, a creation of noble individuals. So you can see them. Hey, this is Vice Chancellor. By the way, we have 62. Oh, yes, 62 Vice Chancellors enrolled in this program. We have over close to 900 participants. 62 Vice Chancellors. We're very proud of them. One is uh, Professor Joseph Afolayan, who is the Vice Chancellor of Ankara University. The benefits include the engagement of qualified trainers, provision of adequate training facilities, sound educational procedure, improved funding, competent graduates, Agbaji uh, of uh, AUC, Akonbi of Oshun State University, Akukuma. Ah, so you can see all of them. See them at our Wadi Sunday, Professor of Freer University, Lokoja, accreditation guarantees this. So I'm not going to read this because you are all going to get this, this uh, document and they all, oh, yeah. A Bonilo Patrick, Professor University of Benin. The benefits are numerous. It acts as an audit and provides it. As you can see, real heavy stuff going on here. Uh, so that's it. Uh, as I mentioned, these are the M's. Uh, I've not marked beyond the A because I can, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed by the ideas that have been generated here. So to summarize the benefits of accreditation it enhances quality it stimulates efficiency it promotes accountability and enhances proprietor funding we have done advantages or benefits let's go to types types of accreditation there are two main types by the way you have program accreditation in the u.s it is called programmatic accreditation and then we have institutional now what's program accreditation it's just accreditation that values the quality of a program within the university, biochemistry, history, Yoruba, Hausa, whatever. What about institutional accreditation? They want, this one is broader. It evaluates the institution as a whole. It, look at, it looks at the organizational capacity to deliver quality education programs. It does not seek to deal with any particular program, although program review is not part of it. So look at some things that institutional uh, accreditation is concerned about governance, administrative strength, academic policies and procedures, quality of faculty, that's of teaching staff and other staff, physical facilities, financial stability. So you can see the elements are in this uh, well, this figure here. So done with the uh, types. Let's go to the process. Uh, we're almost there. Eight out of ten fundamentals of accreditation. Very interesting lesson, I think. Hey, am I deceiving myself? Okay, no. <laughs> I have to say that my soup, my soup this sweet now. Uh -huh. So the process. So I asked our experts. I didn't have to go anywhere because here, resident in Africa, resident in our universities are the best, best in the world. So I asked them. I surveyed them and I asked, "What? How will you describe personal accreditation?" And we got, hey, heavy stuff, heavy stuff. So, Doctor. Piri, who is the executive like, secretary, the head of the National Council for Higher Education in Malawi, said accreditation is a process that requires experts in the field uh, in fields being assessed to provide independent review of the validity of the programs and institutions being uh, accredited. Let, let me show you a version that I've arranged because Dr. Piri was the first. You know, I uploaded this thing and within seconds she had responded. She was the first to respond to my survey and it actually comes in this sequence uh, because it, the timestamp shows that Yakubu Abubakar of KB State was next, Professor Benu of Lasso was next uh, and go, Professor Bihika of Milade was next and it goes on like that. So let us see how uh, we all have addressed this question. How will you describe the process of accreditation to a lay person? Let us uh, look at uh, some of the <laughs> the process, the, the description of uh, our experts. So, by the way, let me tell all those 258 people that have contributed, you already have 20 marks in your bag. 20 marks for the, because all of them uh, uh, responded to the three questions. 
20 marks. I'm going to uh, form the examination committee, you know, to uh, give each person here 20 marks. So let's, uh, those of you who did not, when next we call uh, for contribution, uh, we hope you will uh, make some effort. So, Abdulhamid Awa, Professor, Federal University, uh, Federal University, Kashere. Accreditation is a process where experts are selected to visit the institution, posting the program to be accredited. The experts will be given an instrument to be used for assessing the program. The experts will inspect all the available facilities for the program and ascertain availability, adequacy, and functionality in relation to the number of students in the program and all of that. You can't beat it. You can't beat this one. Professor Ambali Saka Abdul Karim, Federal University, Mina. Self assessment of the program by the institution, yes. Application for accreditation of the program, yes. Preparation and review of the program documents by the institution, yes. Or site assessment of the program by the accredited accreditation body. Submission of the assessment report, decision by accredited. Fantastic, fantastic. All the others that I've not uh, highlighted, they have also written very good uh, description of the process. Adaipo, uh, Professor Martina Adaipo of University of Benin, that a team of top members of the academia with expertise in different subject areas are sent to the department in the areas of expertise, correct? In different universities once every two years. To check whether or not the university still meets the minimum criteria as so a standard, scoring is done against the template, BMAS, required to offer a degree. This part of the training you're going to get, how you do the scoring. Nigeria University department can get partial or full accreditation based on the overall score. If partial accreditation, you can see experience all the way here to the same. All of the BC the same. All of, the GRD, all of this. So let's uh, keep going. I just highlighted a few. Hey, this is by Ande J, Professor University of Joss. Accreditation is a peer review process. Let me see. Highlight this. Yes. Uh, be vaccinated for this. A panel is usually made up of minimum three senior academics, preferably professors in that discipline who are not members of staff of the same institution. I want National University Universities Commission staff who serves as representative. This is very good, very detailed. This is the process. Me, I can't do any better, I'm telling you. Anyway, we are learning together uh, in this uh, in, in, in this course. So let's keep going. Uh, they have all written wonderful things. Let's see, let's see. A Bonillo or Bonillo Patrick, Professor Investor of Benin. I, I like this one, like the others do. The process of accreditation is mentally and physically very challenging. Mentally, the NUC team must work as detectives to uncover truthful information as a self-study guide usually provides false information. Hey, now they hear that now, which is true in some cases, and exaggerated data. The department, despite assurances to the contrary, usually do not view the AC team as partners, but as adversaries, adversaries. So they lie and try to cheat. They see the accreditation exercise as a do or die affair. Physically, due to a large number of students, the physical facilities like the central library, workshop, classrooms, and laboratories are usually not co-located. They must be visited, inspected, assessed, and data provided about them confirmed. There's a lot of trekking is usually involved. <coughs> I can see some of you as uh, 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 panel members already laughing and say, oh, yes, we agree with Professor Patrick Bonillo. Uh, even when the ACT uh, uh, inspecting the offices, student classroom, developmental workshop, uh, they have to stand on their feet and trek for about three or more hours without a break. This is physically exhausting. Also, adequate, inadequate electric power. Oh, you can tell me that makes it difficult for the team to be comfort comfortable until they get back to their hotel rooms. Nevertheless, <laughs> the accreditation process is exciting and necessary in order to ensure that the standard and the future of higher education in Nigeria is maintained and bright, respectively. Ooh, 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 very good. A team, uh, Okobo from uh, uh, Okobo, a team, NUC. The NUC people just got it right. Why? Because that's that's what they've been doing forever and a day. Cause call or the vice chancellor and officials of the university, inspection of physical facilities and the rest of them. Uh Ezugo Chir uh Chino Chino Yerem Grace. And you see the project of creation involves setting up academic panels, which are normally professors of high repute and all of that. 
So I think I can stop here and uh, see all of the furniture. So you all have done very, very well. Kofor, Kofor Mata Jibril of AUC. When the program is due for accreditation, the AUC gives at least three months notice to the concerned university. This is very good. And I want to give a lot of credit to Dr. Uh, Miriam Sally. And before that time, strong man, not in terms of physical strength. Of course, he has physical strength. Though. That's Professor Noel Biodun Sally. These are good. these are great people. They set up a mechanism that you can't you can't beat. So the last exercise was heavy. Uh, uh, if I had to write a letter of commendation for Dr. Miriam Sally to the ES, uh, but Professor is he trained is he trained with or under hey, Professor Sally? So when the program is due for accreditation, NUC gives at least three months notice to the concerned university of an accreditation visit to the program. This. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Kofor Mata, Kofar Mata. Uh, discipline or subdiscipline. A self-study form will be sent to the university for completion. I, I really like this, as I said, like the others, but this is very comprehensive. A self-study form is sent to the university for completion, and this will be filled and 12 copies of the form in respect of the program returned to NUC. On receipt of the completed form, the NUC constitutes an ad hoc accreditation panel, which consists of the chairman and four other members from the academia, academia professional associ associations and regulated bodies or council in addition the panel is serviced by staff of AUC panel members is limited to full professors uh, by the way uh, 20 years ago while I was executive secretary of NUC was when I caused that nobody other than a full professor should be should be part of an accreditation panel for good reason Anyway, that is it. Uh, no need to spend, <laughs> spend your time. We can, can, we can see the uh, positive impact on that. The subject area visitor. A coordination meeting will be organized for the panel member members. At the end of the coordination meeting, the panels leave for the accreditation sites. Care is taken to ensure that members uh, within 300 kilometers of his or university catchment area on the, uh, on, the, on the field, the panel meets with the vice chancellor. Dean of Faculty, Head of Department, and staff of the program to be evaluated. After the introductory meeting, the panel settles down to work and all of the things we've had before. I'm highly, highly impressed with this effort. So let us summarize all this big, big grammar. For program accreditation, the process is straightforward. And this process I would describe is a global template. Everywhere you do accreditation in higher education, you follow this process. Step number one is for you to set minimum standards. I, I didn't hear many of you take a, take a look at this. What are you going to accredit? You got to have it. You got to have a checklist. You got to have the minimum standards of, on, on which you want to evaluate the program or evaluate the institution. So we're looking at program accreditation here. So you have to set minimum standards. That's what's actually going on in the Nigerian system now in terms of revision. We're doing. Core curriculum minimum academic standards being reviewed. So then the university does a self study. Then AUC will select and train the accreditors. That's part of what we're doing now. Then there's a side visit. And then decision is made based on the report of a side visit. And there is a disclosure. And of course, when there is, when there is a disclosure, uh, the university will then use the, the instrument, uh, excuse me, the report to improve. So what decision do we have? Green is, yes, you met 80% or some percent of all the items on the, on the, uh, on the minimum standards, so you, 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 you will put it as accredited. You know, the, uh, the, the decision uh, is either accredited in some countries or like we have in AUC is full accreditation. In the U.S., it is largely is accredited. Then, if you are this amber place, you are neither here nor there. You fill one particular segment of the minimum standards, and you call it interim accreditation. Some national quota assurance agencies call it partial accreditation. Some call it provisional accreditation. And then, when you come to the red zone, it's not accredited. Or say denied in Nigeria, say denied in the US and many others, you say not accredited. 
That's a decision spectrum for program accreditation. What about institution accreditation? The same thing. Save minimum standard, self study, select and train your accreditors, do a site visit, decision is made, and then you will disclose. So, decision spectrum here, the same, more or less. But rather than say accredited, some will say full accreditation or say confidence. Rather than say partial accreditation or interim accreditation, some will say partial confidence. And they hear you have not accredited or no confidence. So what are the cycles? What are the cycles for program and student accreditation? For program accreditation, usually if uh, you have full accreditation, it's for five years. And student accreditation for 10 years. So I've done the process. Let's look at accreditation and degree mills. Hey, you see, there are some you know crooks all over the world. There are some uh, people, some organizations, some entities that have, that have set themselves up as accredited agencies. But they are fake. Also, degree mills, they are all over. Uh, they, uh, I worked with uh, uh, the chair and UNESCO, and we'll come up with uh, the list of degree mills and all these uh, fake, uh, uh, <laughs> fake entities. So let's take on the last one. The last one is World Accreditation Day. Accreditation is so important that you now have a day, 9th of June of every year, it's called World Accreditation Day. For this year, which is past because this is 29th of August, where this lesson is being presented, we said it's, uh, the, 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 it's a global initiative uh, to promote the value of accreditation. For this year, the theme is accreditation, supporting the implementation of the sustainable development goals. When did this start? It started in 2008. That was the first celebration of the world accreditation day which is to spread the message of value and benefits of accreditation and its associated activities such as certification what did we learn in this lesson we looked at the etymology of uh, definition of accreditation the purpose drivers accreditation versus certification brief history advantages types process oh we've done a lot here <laughs> accreditation and degree meals and we looked at what uh the just before I go, the mother asked the son, oh, how was your paper? Hmm. Son said, good, but I didn't know <laughs> the past tense of think. I thought and thought and then finally wrote, tongue. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking, thinking. Oh, I'm thinking. Ah, thinking indeed. <laughs> Well, that brings us to the end of uh, lesson number one. I'll see you at the opening ceremony tomorrow. And uh, we hope we'll have some fun time during this six-week training. I'll see you next lesson. From me, Peter Okebukola, it is. Bye-bye.